When it comes to SpaceX rocket launches, 2022 has been the busiest by far. In 2020, for example, the commercial spaceflight company led by Elon Musk achieved a total of 26 launches, while it sent 31 rockets skyward in 2021, with all of the missions involving its dependable Falcon 9 rocket. Last year, however, SpaceX had achieved a whopping 61 missions, all using the Falcon 9 except for a November launch that used its more powerful triple boost Falcon Heavy rocket to deploy to U.S. Space Force satellites. With more customers looking to send small satellites into orbit, and SpaceX also using its spaceflight hardware to deploy large numbers of its Starlink internet satellites, this year looks set to be even busier for SpaceX. Looking further ahead, SpaceX is also preparing for the first flight of its next-generation Super Heavy rocket and Starship spacecraft. A version of Starship is set to land the first woman and first person of color on the lunar surface in just a few years from now in NASA's Artemis 3 mission and could even carry the first astronauts to Mars. Musk and his team are working around the clock to prepare for the first orbital Starship flight test. During the debut orbital flight attempt, the Super Heavy Booster B-7 will push the Starship SN-24 into Earth orbit from southern Texas. However, not only do SpaceX crews need to work on the Starship rocket, they also have to prepare the readiness of the equally important factor, which SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk calls Stage Zero. For months, SpaceX made huge upgrades for Stage Zero to prepare for orbital flight. First things first, let's talk about what happened to Stage Zero after the devastating explosion back in July of 2022. One of the incidents that directly caused the delay in Starship's 2022 flight schedule, as it attracted the attention of NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, or ASAP. It was during a spin prime test on July 11th that SpaceX suffered what NASA euphemistically calls a high-energy event, when propellants ignited underneath the booster, damaging it. SpaceX has repaired the booster and implemented corrective actions according to the agency. As Mark Kirisic, Deputy Associate Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development at NASA said, the test put a relatively large amount of fuel into a cloud of oxygen, triggering the detonation. That was an operational and planning oversight. SpaceX, in the early days, goes for speed above systems, engineering rigor, he said, calling it a pause and learned event for SpaceX. Paul Hill, a member of NASA's ASAP, made a similar point. SpaceX is still pursuing an aggressive Starship development test plan, but this failure resulted in corrective actions to increase systems engineering and risk management rigor, he said. One of the corrective actions is a water deluge system installed on the orbital launch mount to suppress the fire and engine sound at the time of static fire tests and actual launches. Next, it should be mentioned that after the successful 14-engine static fire test of Booster 7 on November 14th, SpaceX had to repair the launch pad in order to be ready for its next round of tests. One notable repair involved replacing concrete directly under the OLM. At that time, SpaceX also quickly installed the shielding of one of the OLM legs, which houses a multitude of pipes and wires running up into the mount itself. Once the necessary repairs were completed, SpaceX ignited 11 engines on B-7 for approximately 13 seconds on the 29th of November, 2022, marking the longest duration firing of the massive booster so far. Sadly, Stage Zero continued to suffer a lot of damage during engine testing. As a result, after Super Heavy B-7 was removed from the OLM and brought back to the factory for the sixth time this year, it's well apparent that there's a lot of work on and underneath the OLM afterward. Cranes, lifts, concrete pumping, all rushing to get ready for the 33 engine static fire as well as Starship's first orbital flight. The OLM itself is also continuing to receive more shielding around the propellant transfer lines that run 
run up one of the legs and cladding continues to be added near the base of the launch tower. The claddings will eventually go up to protect the pipes, electronics, and mechanics of the launch tower during testing as SpaceX ramps up the number of engines being tested on the pad. But not only were upgrades and repairs made to the OLM, SpaceX also made certain improvements on the Mechazilla launch tower, especially in terms of the chopstick arms. These arms have been built to not only make lifting, moving, and stacking the Starship and Super Heavy boosters easier and quicker, but also to catch part of the Starship as it returns to Earth, saving time, energy, and resources. Unfortunately, the Chopstick's hydraulics system failed during a test on the 6th of August of 2022. No fire occurred, nothing was damaged, and no one was harmed, but the failure caused a delay and raised a bunch of questions about safety. What would happen if the hydraulics system fails during a lift? The short answer is that it could have been catastrophic. But the good old engineers over at SpaceX didn't let that happen. Over a week after the failure, SpaceX upgraded its chopstick arms, heading to catch a booster in the coming days. Hydraulic pistons were installed on the chopsticks. Here's an optimal view captured by Kevin Randolph, the official photographer for What About It. Huge thanks as always to Mr. Randolph. According to him, this upgrade aims to set the stage for a first attempt booster catch for the upcoming Starship launch. Crazy that this is even considerate, but looking more and more likely. SpaceX also made a few fixes to the orbital tank farm in 2022. It appeared to have designed the first orbital class Starship tank farm, a compact and pleasingly symmetric set of eight vertical storage tanks, without taking into consideration rudimentary Texas regulations for the storage of liquid natural gas and methane. The violation caused a delay in filling methane for the orbital tank farm. Fortunately, SpaceX then rectified the problem. Having a substantial amount of liquid with methane stored at the orbital tank farm will finally allow SpaceX to attempt the first major wet dress rehearsals and, more importantly, the first full static buyers with flight-worthy super heavy booster prototypes. Of course, a tank farm with full supplies of liquid oxygen, liquid methane, liquid nitrogen, and their gaseous equivalents is also a necessity for the first orbital Starship launch attempt, which has most recently slipped from a target of mid-2021 to no earlier than the first quarter of 2023. At the time, of this reading, this will be my first recording of the new year. So, Happy New Year's everybody, and let's hope for a special one this year as we all await the first orbital flight of the Starship rocket system. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your constant support of our channel. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.